everyone, and welcome to The Propcast. My name is Louisa Dickens, co-founder of LMR Ray and board director of the UKPA, and I shall be your weekly host. Each week for 30 minutes, we'll be connecting the VCs, prop tech startups, and real estate professionals globally, and assist in bridging that famous communication gap we all love talking about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the PropCast. Today's guests joining us today are from the US, VC Metaprop. So welcome, Aaron and Zander. Thank you, Lulu. And Hi, Lulu. Pleasure to be here. Awesome to have you on. Before we start the questions, um, let me give you a brief introduction to both Aaron and Zander. So Aaron is the co-founder of and managing partner of Metaprop, a New York-based VC firm focused on the real estate technology, otherwise known as the prop tech industry. Founded in 2015, Metaprop's investment team has invested in well over 100 plus technology companies across the real estate value chain, which is insane. The firm manages multiple investment funds, both financial and strategic real estate investors, representing a pilot and test-ready sandbox of 15 plus billion square feet across every real estate asset type and global market. Prior to co-founding Metaprop, Aaron served as an investor, CEO, and chairman of Beirut, the US Russian e-commerce shopping and shipping specialist. Prior to that, Aaron was a commercial real estate executive with Cushman and Wakefield, responsible for 270 professionals in the Chicago region. Aaron has a BA and MBA and has also co-authored the PropTech 101, which is a must read for those interested in PropTech. He has also featured in dozens of international publications and media, including the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Yahoo Finance, and many, many more. Outside of work, Aaron served as board member of numerous organizations, including Young Presidents Organization, New York City Community Board 5, and many more. In addition, Aaron also enjoys speaking Spanish and Russian, which is extremely impressive as I can only manage the broken English. Um, and now for Zander. As the head of strategic partnerships and business development for Metaprop, Zander leads relationships and communications with key players across the real estate value chain and acts as a channel between strategic real estate firms and the emerging prop tech community. Prior to joining Metaprop, Zander was a senior solutions engineer covering the North American region for BTS, where he spent four years working across business development, strategic data analysis, marketing and solutions engineering. The breadth of experience allowed him to work with sales, marketing, data, product engineering, and design. He's a founder of the University of Virginia and I in real estate, which boasts over 200 members internationally. He's a regular guest lecturer at the university on real estate technology topics. Outside of work, Zan is an avid cook and traveler and has a big love of dogs. So guys, look, welcome again to the PropCast. I hope all the listeners have been impressed by, I guess, your sort of experience in the industry and knowledge within that introduction. So let's kick start with the questions. Aaron, so I sort of stopped talking. Please, can you tell us a bit more about how Metaprop sort of came about? Your growth has been insane. Thanks, Lou. You're, you're, you're a little bit too kind. <laughs> we appreciate your efforts to promote the prop tech space and to support all of the stakeholders involved throughout the world here and uh, you're doing a great job. And without an entire village of folks trying to support each individual group and the collective masses here, we wouldn't be where we are. So thank you for your contributions as well. They're very valuable and you've made a difference in the time now that you've been focused on prop tech. Awesome, my Met- pleasure. <laughs> yeah, Metaprop came about with a vision from Zach Aaron's and Aaron Block me to to really create some connective tissue between the real estate technology startup world and the broader real estate and investment ecosystem. Those two stakeholder groups were really missing each other for many years when we got together in 2014 and started talking about the idea, the seedlings of what became Metaprop. The real problem was industry was looking for solutions and didn't know where to find them through technology. Venture capitalists 
were interested in exploring the last frontier, the last industry to be disrupted from their own words, being property and real estate, mm -hmm. but weren't sure how to connect with and understand and underwrite entrepreneurs and technologists building solutions in the space. And perhaps most importantly and severely from our perspective, we recognize that these great entrepreneurs with whom we have met and had done angel investments into over the previous years were struggling to get access to capital from strategic players in the real estate and property business, access to proof of concept, POCs as we call them, pilots, tests, scale-ups in the space. And this lack of connectivity was really the driving force and still is today in many ways behind Metaprop. We do this from a higher calling. We have a mission and our mission is to be a part of creating the connective tissue between these stakeholder groups. It's what got us up in the morning in 2014. It's what founded the launch of our business in 2015. And it's what continues to motivate us and hopefully our broader team today in 2020. Yeah. And I guess, so from starting instead of 2014, how have you gone about sort of raising funds? Obviously, the interest has only increased in investment into this space. Has it, has it become easier to raise funds? Is there less sort of education? Is it, you know, I guess, are there more competitors for this space who want to sort of raise funds or invest? Yeah, I'd love to hear more from you. There's always been some pool of capital willing to invest in early stage entrepreneurs who are solving real estate problems with technology. Over the early few years from 2010 to 2014, my partner Zach was really the most prolific angel investor in the space. And that was the typical profile of investors into property technologies. They were individuals, sometimes smaller family offices who had made their money or had been around the real estate business and were making small early stage bets and then piloting and testing in many cases, some of those technologies within the four walls of their own assets. Over time, in the early, early days, you started to see some folks create pooled capital vehicles, call them funds to invest more programmatically as opposed to one-off angel investments or syndicating. And very quickly, starting in about 2017, late 2016, you started to see a number of entrants starting to professionalize those pools of capital and create real fund structures and investment management teams and firms to focus on the prop tech space. Now, this being said, along the way, there have been a number of generalist investors in venture capital, really strong institutional grade pools of capital managed by top flight professionals who have been investing in real estate technology on a one-off or semi-formal basis. Probably the most famous of them all is Trinity mm. based on the West Coast here of the US and they've done a number of great investments for many, many years. If you fast forward to today, it's not just the trinities of the world who are generalists that happen to do real estate technology investments from time to time. But now you have a real breed of top class prop tech investment firms focused on different aspects, different geographies of the prop tech world. In the UK, you have specialist investment firms. In mainland Europe and the continent, you have specialist investment firms. You're starting to see the beginnings of specialist investment firms in Asia. Certainly in the US, you have two big brands in Fifth Wall and our firm Metaprop, but a bunch of others who are focused on different aspects of the real estate technology world's investment opportunities. It's become a really nice space. Most interestingly, Lou, I think to your point on the maturation of investment capital into this space, we've really had a shining moment, a marquee lighthouse effect impacting the real estate technology and prop tech world 
in 2018, really 2019 and now 2020, as institutional capital has become more comfortable allocating, investing in funds and participating in potential co-investments in the prop tech space. Prop tech is now a category for institutional investors from their own direct capital into co-invest and their indirect capital into investment management funds who deliver great returns. That's a huge moment for our space and bodes very well for the future of the industry. Yeah. It's awesome. And so as you, I guess, there's more activity, you're investing more, you're, I mean, the Metaphor brand is just growing. How have you sort of built your team um, around you since 2014? I'm sure as the brand sort of grows, the space sort of grows, you have lots of people wanting to get involved in Metaprop. I guess what, what do, lots of people ask me, how do I get into VC? What, what do you look for um, when hiring? Well, that's a very, very good question because the, the, the key to success is people. This is a people business. We don't manufacture any products. We don't distribute. We don't have supply chain. The real value in our business is the people. And we invest very heavily in our own teams, both literally and emotionally, in the success of the individuals in order to make a fabulous outcome for the whole firm writ large. The individuals who want to get into VC find themselves in a particularly difficult place right now. Although venture capital has grown quite a bit, although prop tech venture capital is now an investable asset class for institutions, there are still very few opportunities in the real estate technology space to get involved in venture capital. And there will be scarcity in this space for a long time. That being said, there are a few ways that we've been able to help folks who didn't come from purpose-built venture backgrounds Mm. ease into the real estate technology venture capital space. We have run an internship program. And as you know, we have a very high profile affiliation with Columbia University where we run an accelerator program that has graduated its seventh cohort here in 2020. We're very proud of our affiliation with the university and our ability to work with a number of their students and recent alumni, faculty, and researchers. And that's one way to get engaged is through university or internship program related. Another way to get engaged is we happen to work with professionals who have established careers over the years with whom we've built long-term trustful relationships and put them into positions as venture advisors, entrepreneurs in residence, mentors for in our accelerator program, and other tangential affiliated roles within Metaprop's community and orbit without being full-time employees off the bat. That's another way. I think Xander can speak most clearly as someone who has actually made the transition from industry and technology into venture capital about ways that folks can think about, position themselves, build relationships and execute on plans to get closer to venture capital. Yeah, well, Donna, let's, we'd love to hear about um, your experience from, I guess, BTS and how, how I guess you introduced Aaron and yeah, tell us your story. Um, thank you, I appreciate the, uh, the tee up, Aaron. And I think that's, a, that's an excellent point more around when you, Still on the other side of working for a startup and you join at a relatively, you know, at the earlier stage, you have little knowledge of the, the VC world. You start to you have a, you know, at least surface level knowledge and introductions. Uh, but as you start to look across, look across the room and start to make those introductions and start to expand those relationships, um, then you start to really understand who are the, the main players. And you know, at BTS, we were fortunate enough to have exposure to, and we were able to you know, attend uh, meetings with our you know, venture-backed firms and also with our investors. So we were able to understand who they were, what, what they were focused on, and why they cared. 
about our company and the people that were involved in it. And that was something that was always stressed by the, the venture firms is how much of the people mattered at our firm and what we were doing and how we were building a, a culture that was something that would last and, and proliferate. And just from my own perspective, it was you know, always had a, an interest in my mind, though, to switch over to VC. You know, I saw that as a, a long-term goal. And as I was uh, you know, really growing my career on uh, the solution engineering side, so I was, you know, taking uh, taking stock of the the whole firm. So I didn't didn't want to just look at one piece and just being on the the sales side or the account management side. I thought, and I would encourage others who work at these project startups to reach across every group and try to gain exposure and a uh, perspective. So working with the finance teams, the data teams, the, uh, the account management, the sales, the product engineering teams, just to sit as many sit downs and casual conversations or even formal projects to work on so that you can gain a full view of really what is, what's happening at your firm and at your company and how you can grow from there. And then as that starts to evolve, you'll gain such a, you know, a strong subset of knowledge that as the opportunity arises, you can really come in with a, a strong perspective that can then advise the newcomers into the space, which is something that really attracted me to, to Metapop when I was just first introduced by a dear friend um, who came to see me speak and do a presentation on the landscape of commercial real estate technology. And then from there, we were, we were off to the races, Aaron. And I guess also for you, how did, how did you first get involved in this space from you know, university? Like why real estate technology for you? Yeah, that's a, that's a really great question, uh, Lou. So I think it really stems back to when I first got out of university, I was uh, <clears throat> working as a research analyst at, at a hedge fund, so working on the finance side. And I saw that it was more or less a lot of my, my fellow alumni and friends were switching over technology or were getting more embedded within the real estate world. So I had a thought, this was you know, five years ago, that, or actually six years ago, that I, what if I could combine the two? Is there anything that exists? This is before prop tech was a really a buzzword or just a word that people was, was common to use. So I you know, looked around, interviewed as many places as I could, and was lucky enough um, to be introduced to Bob White, who became a, and has been a mentor. Um, Bob White is the CEO of Real Capital Analytics. He's, uh, you know, been a strong mentor uh, for identifying opportunities and seeing how the space has grown. And I think that's also really important advice I give to anyone entering and growing in the space is to always, you know, identify who would be your mentors and advisors and grow that network from your onset. So always look out and always stay in touch, and whether those are family relations or friends or those you can just network, just as really as you can just hit the payment as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So I was introduced with the idea that there are new technologies coming out. So Bob suggested strongly to look at Hightower and BTS. And then as uh, I looked at, you know, fortunate enough to have joined the BTS team and, and see, saw the opportunity that I could really make a difference in a part of the, the value chain just within real estate that really had not necessarily been touched or moved. And with such a growing and vibrant culture, it truly attracted me to the space. It was everything that I was looking for at that point in time. And it was a, a truly exciting and moving experience. And I guess since joining the Metropop, how, I guess you went in and you're it revolved in the street of partnerships. How's your sort of role, your role changed? The space has sort of grown. Obviously, you were focused about US. Have you got another sort of remit with your role as well? Yeah. So the, the though we are focused you know, and uh, focus on North American opportunities and North American entrepreneurs, what well, we have you know the ability and have identified opportunities globally. I think for my role, I like to take as much of that global approach as possible and. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, demand and, you know, folks pining for really the innovation that is coming out of North America that we've seen from our own companies mm. or the companies that we've uh, invested in. And so I like to really make sure that I'm touching and being in constant communication with as many growing markets as possible. So there's, and after traveling extensively in Europe and in Latin America, made some great relationships to which I've been able to expand 
in this role. So there's always constant conversations with folks in Argentina and Brazil, and then in Germany and in the UK, and then also in Southeast Asia and uh, mainland China. There's always exciting folks who are looking to expand their knowledge and share in this, this next wave of innovation. So it's, that's what really my, uh, my day-to-day looks like. Yeah. Well, hopefully when we're sort of back to some sort of normality and travels back, looking forward to having you over here in London or no doubt connecting some, I guess, someplace in Europe. I brought that up as our listeners are, they're coming from sort of across the world. So anyone who's listening to this at the end, we'll be sharing how you can contact and Zander as well and Aaron. Um, But I guess going back um, to some of the questions we discussed earlier, Aaron, obviously there's been a lot of change over the past sort of few months and we spoke about this this space growing. Will, I guess, whether it's pandemic or investment, do you you foresee the space continuing to grow at the same pace? I guess it's, you know, and you predict things. What what do you think the future of PropTech looks like when I say future over the next sort of five, five years? Hello. The future is bright in many ways. We've seen a, some of the medicine being taken, so to speak, already with the DIPO of WeWork and the resetting of expectations for many of the more asset heavy real estate technology related plays. So that's really good. The reset of entrepreneur expectations around valuation and capital structures to support their innovation efforts really gives me the final piece of the puzzle to feel extremely bullish on the future of our space. First of all, as we mentioned earlier, there is an institutional capital alignment that never existed before. Our tiny space has grown to become a more mature investable category for institutions around the world. That creates additional momentum and positive flow to the ultimate entrepreneurs who need capital and want to grow, which in turn creates more entrepreneurs who want to invest their time and effort building companies in the space because they can access more capital. It's a wonderful cycle. Number two, we have seen a change in the real estate cycle. As we've seen properties move from cash flowing nicely, cap rates compressing to a more uncertain real estate market and the beginnings or middle of a downturn, fewer landlords, owners, developers, operators of property are willing to be reticent around engaging in innovation, particularly in North America, which was way behind from an interest perspective, what we saw in Europe regarding real estate technology, proof of concepts, pilots, tests, and scale-ups. Now that the wheels are in motion and that it is required, to create new revenue streams or to squeeze out inefficiencies or to differentiate a brand through technology. We are very excited about the next few months and next couple of years of real estate technology startup growth. Number three is you have a very strong orientation toward health focused technology solutions due to COVID. It's almost like the icing on the cake. The folks who also were reticent, who were stuck in the dark ages, who were unwilling or unable to find ways to try, test, and implement technology have changed their tune. Their first reaction now is how can technology allow us to get back to work? How can technology allow us to use space more effectively in during a health crisis like COVID-19? How can we reopen our buildings faster or more efficiently using technology? It went from the last priority to the first priority. And that is the ultimate catalyst for more success in the space. So the resetting of expectations overlaying all three of those main fundamentals gives us a very bullish perspective, particularly for early stage investments in the space. If you look at venture capital, Lou, 
over the years, the best performing funds tend to be built coming out of economic downturns. Those funds tend to perform up to two times as well as their peer funds built during different vintages. So everything's pointing to a very good time to be an entrepreneur in the space and an excellent time to be a top tier investor in the space. Um, and are there, I guess you said, about certain technologies about getting people back to work are there any sort of exciting markets or startups you would like to sort of hear from from any verticals for those startups who are sort of listening um to this podcast yeah well i think anybody who's solving problems around senior care are very interesting to us and have been for, for about 18 months now, but we're really excited about the opportunities that now exist in this fragmented asset subsector within property and real estate. Obviously, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of beds around the world for independent living, assisted living, skilled nursing, hospitalization, rehab, and other senior use types, there has been very little innovation that's been able to be developed and implemented in the built environment aspects. And we're really excited now, thanks to the crisis in some ways, unfortunately, to be able to have momentum to find great new technologies to try to invest in and to pilot and test within our partners' portfolios and the broader property community. That is a challenge to anyone who is thinking about developing a business or evolving their product. The senior space across the entire spectrum of subtypes is really hungry for technology driven solutions today and we're excited to invest in them. Yeah, well it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next few years that we've seen obviously a surge in co living, which obviously uh, from what I understand has really started in the US and now it's it's definitely over here in the UK and sort of Europe. So it'll be good to see the growth in the senior living space and yeah, it's definitely it's definitely needed. Unfortunately, this is bringing us to the end of the show. Frustratingly, I'm sure we'll get you on in our next sort of series and to talk about another topic. But before before we go, Aaron, Aaron Zander, is there anything you'd like to sort of share about audience list, listeners about the best way for them to sort of connect with you? Aaron, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you. Our website is metaprop.vc. Please come check out our portfolio companies understand our vision for investing and supporting startups and the broader international prop tech community. And if you have questions, emailing info at metaprop.vc is a great way to reach us. So, and Xander with you? Yeah, and you know, specifically, I would uh, I welcome all anyone to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm sure they will share my full name and spelling, as exciting <laughs> as it is. And uh, then my email will be my Z Geronimos at metaprop.bc, and, and in there you'll find my Calendly and my cell. I'm always available and always excited to have conversations. It's kind of a, a constant thing that. Aaron can attest to, and I think you can as well, Lou. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I'm here for, here to listen and here to get everyone connected because, you know, the real, the really exciting and what the gravy is that's coming out of, of Metaprop, that magic that we are involved in is something that I am implored to share uh, with, the, with the world. And that's what makes me happen. It gives us fulfillment. So I'm always happy to have conversations. Awesome. Well, look, Aaron and Zan, it's been an absolute pleasure um, having you both on the PropCast and hearing more about what Metaprop's been up to, what you're sort of looking for, the future of sort of, I guess, VC and investments. It's, the future looks bright, Aaron, and it's been great to have a bit of optimism as well. And Zana, thank you so much for sharing, your, I guess, how to get into VC. It's a growing space along with the sort of prop tech, prop tech area too. So thank you both. And um, we'll share all the details, how to get in touch with you at the end of the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Thank you, Lou. Thank you for joining us this week on the PropCast and a big thanks to our special guests. Make sure you visit our website, www.nmre.co.uk, where you can subscribe to our show or you'll find us on iTunes and Spotify where all good content is found. Whilst you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate if you could rate and review us on iTunes or if you simply just spread the word. 
Be sure to tune in next Tuesday and I'll catch you later. You're listening to a podcast company podcast. This was made by Podcast Syndicator, where we help you go from start to grow to making money with your podcast. Let us help you share your message and your voice with the world. Reach out now, Jason at podcastsyndicator.com or Brett at podcastsyndicator.com to find out more. Thank you for listening and do come back to hear nothing but the best podcasts.